Hi, this is Jeff from the Ozark Mountains. That's in Missouri, in the USA. Today, this is a little different type of video. It's part announcement and part backstory. You might remember last year, I found a couple of Amiga 500s and immediately ran into the problem that a lot of people do. Those bloody DB23 video connectors. They're almost impossible to find. This video is about the adventure in obtaining new DB23 video connectors for the Amiga. Let's get started. Back in the day, Commodore chose to use a 23-pin variation of the common D-sub connector for the video port. This made sense as it made it impossible to plug your monitor into the serial port or vice versa. Now, all these years later, that seemingly smart choice is a major pain as the DB23 connectors have not been manufactured for 30 plus years. The standard tact is to cut down a DB25, lopping two pins off of one end. I did a video about this last year, and even though I went to the extreme of using a CNC machine and making a very precisely modified DB25, it was still ugly and results in the metal shell being loose. It works, but it's certainly not ideal. For the most part, the old stocks of DB23 female connectors have dried up, and the few still available were fetching around $12 each. Not really feasible if you want to make a bunch of Amiga video cables or video adapters. So this is where the story begins, wanting to obtain some new DB23 female connectors. After spending ages trying to find a manufacturer and creating a series of DB23 mechanical drawings, fate intervened. A friend of mine told me about a friend of his who was working on the same project, and a new friendship was formed. This is how I met Francis from Retronic Design in Canada. In fact, after getting to know Francis, I realized that I knew about his company for several years. I had purchased one of his USB to vintage joystick adapters on eBay many years ago, and this thing is great. I can use my old Wiko joysticks and vice on the PC using this. Now that Francis and I had teamed up, we found that an unscrupulous manufacturer had been trying to place against each other. The manufacturer was trying to get both of us to pay for the same expensive tooling. Well, disaster avoided. Now working as a team, Francis and I vetted many manufacturers and did destructive teardowns on many samples of connectors before finding a really good manufacturer. What makes a good connector? Along the way, we learned a lot about how connectors were made and what the quality difference is between them. One example is the difference in the female contact. There are several styles that come in at different price points. The fork style is the cheapest by far. We found that this style makes a very unreliable connection over time. In fact, even when new, the failure rate is very high. While cheap, they were completely unsuitable for Amiga video connectors. The next step up is the leaf style contact. This type has two curved leaves that surround about 50% of the male pin. These are much better than the fork style and will make for a reliable connection. The pinnacle of them all is the semicircular contact. It is similar to the leaf type, but encompasses most of the male pin. This makes for a very robust socket that provides a reliable connection over a very long period of time. We chose to use the semicircular contact type and went a step further and had the contacts gold plated. The gold plating will not oxidize like tin and will maintain a very reliable connection for many years. The solder cup, that is the wire side of the contact, is tin plated to make soldering easier. The next step in the process was producing samples. After the tooling was completed, the manufacturer made a few sample parts and sent some to both Francis and I. We did destructive teardowns and lots of evaluations and we found them to be really high quality connectors. And it was kind of sad tearing apart these brand new DB23 connectors. These were the first few that had been made in decades, but it was necessary to ensure that they were really good quality. Getting to the point of having new DB23 connectors made for the Amiga required months of effort between Francis and I. After finally finding just the right manufacturer, we both invested a lot of money to have the tooling made and the connectors produced. Now why would the two of us be crazy enough to invest all this time and money in getting some little connectors made for vintage computers? 
Well, it's not about the money. The two of us aren't going to be living the lifestyles of the rich and famous. It's about the passion. It's about the passion for these old computers that have done so much to shape the course of our lives. These are the computers that we grew up with and which stoked our passion for computers and technology. We are both very grateful for the support we received from the retro community during this project. You guys are what encouraged us to see this project through. Shipments of new DB23 connectors are winging their way to various manufacturers around the world right now. Soon you'll be able to buy Amiga video cables and adapters made with new, top quality DB23 connectors. If you're in the market for a DB23 connector for your Amiga, we've put our links in the description down below. If you're looking for an Amiga cable or adapter pre-made, just look for the blue connector so you know you're getting a genuine DB23 that's top quality and not a cut down DB25. So thanks for your support during this project. It is very much appreciated. Francis and I are hoping to team up on other retro projects in the future. And again, if you're needing any DB23 connectors, see the links in the description down below. Thanks. Until next time, bye.